Now, before we begin, I have to tell you something. In the first part of the video where we tried to make dinitrogen trioxide and nitrogen dioxide with an inert atmosphere and oxygen, this part was an absolute disaster. The joints of the apparatus were blown out because of overpressure when I was trying to fill up ampules and most of the stuff didn't want to condense and was simply let into the gas trap on the outside where it was lost. But anyways, we ended up with a pure product and in the second part of the video where with the decomposition of lead nitrate, that went just alright. Enjoy! For this preparation, 50 grams of sodium nitrite, 150 milliliters of 49% sulfuric acid, which represents a huge excess of sulfuric acid, Phosphorus pentoxide, argon and oxygen are needed. The argon will be used to create an inert atmosphere in the beginning. This ensures dinitrogen trioxide formation. The oxygen will be used to oxidize that further to nitrogen dioxide. I actually got a special gas mask filter for this video because normal filters are not suited for nitrogen dioxide and other nitrogen oxides. We started off the preparation by adding the sodium nitrite to a 3 neck round bottom flask. A pressure equalizing addition funnel was filled up using 49% sulfuric acid. Here you can see the entirety of the apparatus. 3 neck round bottom flask containing sodium nitrite with the addition funnel on top of it, a washing bottle containing phosphorus pentoxide as a drying agent and this ampule with two syringes stuck into it. We purge the air out of the apparatus using argon. The gas bottle was attached to the right neck of the round bottom flask. You can already see some nitrogen oxides in the round bottom flask because I didn't clean the funnel in between additions and some nitrogen dioxide was already formed. As we purge the apparatus with argon, the red nitrogen dioxide color disappeared completely. I'm soon going to explain to you why we are even using argon. Sulfuric acid first reacts with sodium nitrite to form sodium sulfate and nitrous acid. Most of the nitrous acid then decomposes to form equimolar amounts of nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. These can later be condensed to form dinitrogen trioxide. With leftover oxygen, some of the nitrogen monoxide would react with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. This would completely destroy the purity of our product. We first tried out this preparation for quite a while until I thought that we had collected enough dinitrogen trioxide. The moment I was happy with the dinitrogen trioxide amount, the oxygen bottle was attached to the apparatus and a slow oxygen flow was introduced. You can see that upon addition, the gases in the round bottom flask turned more reddish. You can see that when oxygen got introduced, the contents of the round bottom flask turned even redder. The condensing tubes were switched out later on for fresh ones to condense nitrogen dioxide. Those are the reactions and side reactions taking place. I actually plan to use copper to get rid of some nitric acid that is also formed, but in the end I decided against it because the amount of nitric acid formed should be considerably small. Unfortunately, a lot of the nitrogen dioxide didn't want to condense and simply left the apparatus. It's better to get some product than to end up with a 0% yield. All ampules were sealed using an oxyacetylene torch. In the end, we were left with this. This should be approximately 1 gram of pure anhydrous dinitrogen trioxide, which should not be contaminated with any nitrogen dioxide due to argon purging of the apparatus. We also got two ampules of nitrogen dioxide and one ampule of mixed nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide. Off screen I've also got an ampule containing approximately 3 more milliliters of nitrogen dioxide but I sadly cannot show you that because it's sitting in epoxy and I have to wait for it to cure. When taking a closer look at the dinitrogen trioxide ampule, you can see that it is this blue and greenish liquid. It's actually completely blue when you cool it down a little, but on camera that blue color sadly did not turn out very well. 
Stay until the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to shift the equilibrium between dinitrogen tetroxide and nitrogen dioxide because this isn't pure nitrogen dioxide. It's an equilibrium of NO2 and N2O4. Subscribe to this channel in order not to miss out on part 2. I've decided to split up this video because we are exploring two different reactions for making nitrogen dioxide. Anyways, I'm wishing you a nice day. See you next time.